Hola, bienvenidos. Welcome to tonight's Facebook Live program. I'm Catherine Soto, moderator for this evening, and we welcome you as we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. I am the Senior Director of Patient Education and Support for the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, where part of our mission is to improve the lives of all people affected by Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. This includes people from all backgrounds and walks of life. And throughout the next or the weeks that have followed, uh, that have proceeded for Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15 through October 15, uh, we are bringing forward the voices of patients from the Hispanic Latino community. And we wanna share our appreciation and varied cultural experiences. So I'm joined today by a very special guest, Annette Martinez, who is a patient and a member of the foundation's board of trustees, who is proudly celebrating her Hispanic heritage. So Annette, welcome. Thanks so much, Kat. I'm so honored to be here today celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month with the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation and look forward to visiting with you. Great, and before we get started, let's go over a few quick pieces of housekeeping. So today's program will mostly be a conversation around patient experiences in the context of Hispanic Heritage Month, but any information that does come up during tonight's chat is meant for educational purposes only. It should not replace any advice you receive from your gastroenterologist, your primary care provider, nutritionist, or surgeon. If you have any questions about your specific care, please reach out to your healthcare provider. And you can also contact the IBD Health Center which is available by calling 1-888-MY-GUT-PAIN or emailing us at info at Crohn'sColitisFoundation.org. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So Annette, please tell us a little bit about yourself, your connection to inflammatory bowel disease and about your ethnic identity. Excellent. Well, I'm so grateful to be here again and to share some of this information. So a little bit about myself. Um, I've been with State Farm Insurance for 34 years as I'm a senior vice president and have had the privilege of working for that great organization in multiple locations as well. Um, my journey with Crohn's and colitis actually for me started almost 20 years ago. And um, it was, uh, we'll get into that a little bit about the history and how I learned that, but it has been an amazing journey. Um, I've had incredible support from my leaders, my company, um, but it has certainly been a learning experience too. And so I'm excited to share some of what I've learned along the way. And I've always identified as I think about my ethnic identity as a Mexican American. Um, I'm from originally from Colorado. My mother was born in New Mexico, uh, my father in Southern Colorado. And so I was raised in that state, but again, I've lived all over the the country as well. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing a little bit about that. And let's dig in a little bit about your cultural experiences. I, I would love to know what are your fondest memories or things that you currently still cherish and appreciate about your culture? Yeah. So I think the two things that came to mind uh, first was really around family, just this nucleus of family. In fact, when I moved away from home, I was the first one in my family to have moved away, which was not very popular, you can imagine, with all my relatives. Um, and then the second is food. And often they were together, um, that we were together um, every Sunday in our household. The whole family came together and we ate and shared, but, um, you know, we were together a lot and oftentimes it centered around food. And so that's always been very fond memories to me. Um, the other thing, you know, just that tight nucleus was really just the support that I have for my family. And so even as I moved away, my parents were incredible about coming to be supportive for me. They were always there when I needed them to. And I, I just love that tight nucleus of family and support that I've always received. So those are the things that I think come to mind most. That's lovely. Um, I think that uh, our our memories of family, I think that's a very much a something that we can share and relate to in the Hispanic Latino culture. I mean, many yeah. people do, but it is such a strong thing that bonds uh, of, of a bond in our community yeah. that we appreciate and value. So that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. um, my next question is in your experience as a Hispanic Latino woman, mm -hmm. how has your heritage being Mexican American, how has that been a part of your experiences as a, as a patient with IBD? And tell us like some examples that you can share. Yeah, so, um, you know, as I said, I've been a patient for uh, 20 years, but in retrospect, I think that I probably had a lot of the symptoms many years before. 
And um, so I was a, a born and raised on a farm as well. And so in the farm, you don't do, you don't go to the doctors a lot anyway. And in our culture, there is kind of this relationship of, you know, can we can heal this together. So there was, you know, sometimes medicines that came down from generations that we tried. And so some of my early symptoms, I think, probably could have been caught if we would have been more regular in going to the doctor. It wasn't, in our case, a trust issue, but I do know sometimes in our culture, there is that piece of, I can't go to a doctor who looks like me. In some cases, there's language barriers, and so I don't find providers that can really care for me, or I don't feel comfortable with that. It wasn't necessarily that case for me. It was just more of, um, you know, let's try to fix this on our own, and if we have to, we'll go to the doctor. And because my father was self-employed as well, um, we didn't have insurance. And that certainly was a barrier for us. We only went when we had to because we just couldn't afford it in all cases. And, um, and so I think that was always something a part of a consideration. And then lastly, what I would share is some things you just don't talk about. And, um, and so I've always been the child. I was a baby of four. And uh, I stay, still say baby because I, I certainly act like the youngest of four still, even at my age. But, um, you know, those were things that I may have brought up because I was a little bit ornery and I would bring up things, but it, they weren't inappropriate. And, you know, our mom often told us when we were in groups, we had a lot of people at our house all the time, family, people from our church. Um, we were to be silent as children. And, um, and I think that carried over even to how we felt and even medical issues that we had. So I think all of those things did play into it culturally. Did you in that process ever have to have a conversation with your family or change that perspective a little bit because of what you were going through or so was there were there any difficult conversations you had to have to help educate your family on the value of the experience you now know of how important it is to be proactive and talk openly is that something that you had to address. Yeah, we evolved to that uh, in a very different way. So um, really the reason I found it that I had Crohn's and colitis and that went in finally was my father was diagnosed with colon cancer. And um, the type of cancer he had, they said, was very slow growing, but it was highly hereditary. And so he was told by the doctors, all of his siblings, he was one of eight children, and all of his children needed to be tested. And, um, and so he, he notified everyone. I was still in my 30s. And at the time, I went to my doctor. And they said, oh, you're too young. We don't really need to test you. So I was the only one out of the group that didn't get tested. His youngest sister was did find out she had colon cancer. And then I had a sister who found out she had polyps. But about two years later, I started having very severe symptoms. And it was enough that I then at that point thought I must have colon cancer. And I think that opened up the door because of my dad's diagnosis, his treatment, it opened up the door to a lot of conversations. And of course, um, we went in right away to our medical provider. And that's when I found out I had Crohn's and colitis. So had we not had that experience, I think it may have been difficult. And, um, and one of the things that I learned about myself is when I started having very severe symptoms that you really just couldn't turn an eye from, you had to address it. Um, you have this moment of fear that do I really want to know? And in that case, because I was concerned I had cancer, do I really want to know? And then how am I going to tell people? And I remember facing those, but just because he had had such great success finding his early enough, um, I was really more open to talk about it. So in that way, I think it did open up the doors to just have the conversations. Since that time, I think we just learned as a family and they've been on my journey with me, even though I hadn't lived close to family. Um, they went through the ups and downs with me as well. And I think we just have opened up the lines of communication because of that. That's great. And family is so important, but how about other people in your circle of support? So were there, did you have the experience of having other Hispanic Latino patients that were going through what you were going through in your circle of support? And if not, or, you know, would it have, would have that been helpful in your cultural experience? Sure, absolutely. I did not have any other Latinos or people around me to experience. I, I did have friends that I felt comfortable having that conversation with, but they didn't understand because, you know, they weren't experiencing that. Now, since then, I've had friends and colleagues who have had um, symptoms, and I'm more um, 
I prompt them more, get to the doctor, make sure you get checked out. Is there something else going on? And so I think that's opened up the conversation. I've always been very open with my employer and the colleagues and my supervisors about my condition. So um, I didn't hold it private because I knew that it was impacting, you know, as a leader in a big organization, um, there were a lot of demands on me and I knew stress was one of the triggers for me. And so I had to be very open about when I was having issues and I had their support as well. But I think to your second point would have been helpful. I think it would have been helpful not to be so isolated. Um, because until I started finding other patients or people that I knew that had experienced that, it, it was very isolating because even though my family tried to understand a lot of it, um, you do feel pretty lonely and, and you feel, you know, at times when, you know, I've had um, different types of outbreaks, um, you know, you'd feel terrible anyway. And then to feel so lonely and, and not have people around you that can understand, I think that'd be important. And definitely, I always feel, I think like all of us, if there are people around us who we identify more with, uh, whether that's, a, you know, maybe a gender or um, somebody that we just relate to on a different level or ethnicity, I think those always just feel a little bit warmer connections as well. So yeah, it would have been helpful. And we're certainly around for that kind of support, which we'll share a little bit later. I want to add a, a question um, your way because you are a very successful woman and congratulations mm -hmm. on your career and your journey. Um, talking generally about mm -hmm. what it took to get there, how did you cope with that? And on top of that, layered with um, being Hispanic Latina, how did that was how was that an additional layer on top of being a patient on top of being you know trying to be a successful woman in your career? What was that like? Yeah, well, absolutely. As you said, there's so many layers to each of us, right? And we all have to cope and deal with different issues in, in our lives. So for me, moving away from home was a big thing for us, you know, for the family. They wanted, in fact, my sister, I'll never forget as I was driving out of the driveway, leaving home, she said, I can't believe they would rip you from our arms. It was like very dramatic, you know, and, and so I really had to get the family supportive of just the journey I was going to go on. And we had no idea where it would take us. Um, but I would say more than anything, I have an incredibly supportive spouse. And um, he really lifted me up so many times. And um, being a woman moving up in corporate America, you know, so you talk about this journey and not having a lot of people to identify with. Early in my career, there were not a lot of women in those higher level uh, roles. And so you had to have find other advocates um, and start building more, you know, that circle of women. Hopefully you're bringing them along to be part of their success as well. And, um, and so going back to the word I used before, it was very isolating in many cases too. And that's why having my husband, who's been incredibly supportive, we've been married almost 35 years. Um, he also worked for the company. And so he understood the inner workings and he was able to really help me work through some of those issues. Um, and then uh, I have a daughter, an amazing daughter who is um, 20, just turned 23, who has been also very supportive because there were a lot of family sacrifices. You know, I traveled a lot. Um, it was high pressure jobs. I worked long hours. I, I think more than anything, though, when I think and relate to Crohn's and colitis and my disease, I had to really start to listen to my body more. I was raised in a place in a, with a father who was tremendously supportive, but it was all about hard work. My mother was a field laborer when she grew up. She was not an immigrant, but she was um, raised in the fields. So she was poor. And, um, and so she knew hard work. My father was a farmer. He started his own business. He knew hard work. So you didn't have time to be sick. You know, you, you went to work sick many times. And I had to learn how to give myself permission when I needed to, to say, it's time to take care of myself too. And it's, that has been a journey for me just because, you know, I still have the voices of my parents in my head telling me to, you know, to get to work, but I had to really start listening to my body, which was very important. And it sounds like you have a lot of that gratitude for that work, strong work ethic that was handed to you from your cultural experiences and your family's experiences. So kudos to them because then that seems to have been a contributor to driving you forward. So that's yeah. awesome. Thanks it for was. sharing that. Thank you.
Yeah. So um, shifting gears a little bit, um, the latest census data, the U.S. census data states that there's greater than 18 percent of the U.S. population that is Hispanic and Latino. And there are many studies that we know that tell us that historically marginalized groups experience uh, worse health outcomes. Right. So what advice do you have for Hispanic and Latinos living with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis? How do you advocate for your own health needs? Yeah, so um, first of all, those statistics are frightening, but certainly not surprising. And I think there's a lot of places, for instance, in my family have a high incidence rate of diabetes, which I know is very prevalent in the Hispanic community. And, um, and they weren't always taking care of themselves because um, again, you know, I think maybe some of the barriers I talked about earlier, sometimes it's a language barrier, sometimes it's a lack of insurance or resources to be able to access that type of resources. And so more than anything, I, I guess I would share two things. One is to be informed. There's so many opportunities and things. Uh, social media, um, you know, just even being able to access information from home now versus in the past, when I was growing up, you had to go to the doctor. They were your only source of information. But now I have access to a lot of information and I try to stay very informed, but I try to stay balanced in my information as well. So I don't use just one site. I go and try to look at different things, not to scare myself, but just to understand a little bit more. And then the second really leads into that. That way I can ask better questions of my provider as well. I loved what you said up front. You know, this doesn't, we aren't trying to provide people with options outside of their medical providers. My medical providers have been very important to my journey and multiple medical providers. And I've had the relationships with them where I could sit down and have conversations. But early on, I was timid. And I think that is something in our culture because we just accept what the doctor tells us instead of being informed and then going and asking questions and having a conversation. It's not a one-way conversation. And we should be part of that discussion and look for options too. So I think that that's really important. And just I'll give you an example. Early on, I started asking questions of my doctor about a couple of things. I asked about probiotics, which I had started early research. Now we're doing some great work around probiotics, specifically for, for Crohn's and colitis patients as well. But at that time, it was still very early. And the doctor said to me, who I loved my doctor, but um, he said to me, oh, we don't really know if that works. So if you want to, fine. If you don't, fine. And um, that wasn't good enough for me. I, you know, I still had to keep pushing and asking. And interesting enough, their practice really evolved to having very specific um, probiotic recommendations for their patients too, which, you know, we all evolve in this journey and they're learning more and we're learning more too. So more than anything, I think those two things for me is being informed, have open conversations is really important. That's important. I think that's a good example that you experienced. And I know there's so many patients who have questions out there about diet and, you know, what's, what's the right right uh, ingredient for me, what works for me, what's going to help my symptoms and, and knowing that that's, you know, there's a really individualized conversation speaks to your point that you have to advocate, right? So you have to have those conversations, the two way conversation. So yeah. that's a really important message, Annette, that you've shared. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing I want to recognize about you is your current role as a volunteer and a member of the board of trustees for the foundation. Tell us Tell us like your journey and connecting with us. Uh, how did that evolve um, to your current volunteer role? And why do you even want to give back? Yeah, well, um, it has been fabulous and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's been a, a little bit of a whirlwind over the last couple of years. But, you know, I've been on this journey for a long time. But I had, like I said, I had never really hidden this from people around me. I tried to be an advocate just to speak about it because I felt like it was such a topic that people didn't really want to talk about it. You know, I have it. I own that. Um, and I think people need to be informed around it as well. But I met a, a colleague and friend that um, he and I just worked together for a long time and we kind of followed each other's careers. And he shared with me um, the journey his daughter was on uh, with Crohn's and colitis. And that opened up some really great conversations. And based on that, then he invited me to be involved in a, a fundraiser um, that they were going to be doing to come and just talk a little bit about my story. 
and to share a little bit about that as they were doing their fundraising. And then based from that, uh, we had more conversations and, um, and that's when I got asked and talking to the board and seeing if I was interested in doing this and have been serving since March officially and have loved the experience. And a couple of things about the experience that I really love. First of all, it's a core group of people that really care about this. Some of them are patients themselves. Some of them have family members who are patients. Some of them um, are medical providers that are providing support to patients. But they have just this really common theme of saying, we wanna beat this disease. And um, I know early on when I was first diagnosed, I can tell you the conversation I had with my first doctor was, well, we don't really know a lot about it. And uh, we really can't tell you why you have it. And basically this is the medicine and this is all you need to do. And, um, you know, of course you're shocked at that point and you don't really know what to do. And, um, and so when I think now, even what I've learned over the last two years with the resources and the Crohn's and Clyde's Foundation, you know, research that's being done, all of the resources out there, even as we dealt with COVID this last year, they were so informative for me as well. I, I feel like it's a shame that I only had this in the last two years for my 20 year journey. Um, but I'm so proud of that and I'm proud to be part of it and, and why I want to be uh, really active and in the center of it is because I just, I'm a very hopeful person. And when somebody tells me we're here to help cure this disease, I'm all in because I, I always have hope that we can make a huge difference in the lives of people. Um, and yes, it'll benefit me personally. But um, when I see children that are dealing with this, it's just heartbreaking to me to think they live this long life of having to battle this and knowing my journey was really as an adult. I do, um, I just have a compassion for that, that I wanna be part of helping solve this, this puzzle that we have in front of us. That's great. I, I was gonna ask you, how did you feel? What were those feelings you had when you first um, went to an event of ours or, um, we're in a room with other patients like you that were more than just one or two that were like a handful or more than a handful. Yeah. How did that feel for you? Yeah. You know, it's funny when you ask that question, the first word that came to mind is freedom. It was this, again, I had not been closed about it, but nobody really understands it. To have other people who understand it from multiple angles, it was this freedom to say, you know, I'm a part of something else. Um, and it takes you away from that isolation that I talked about earlier. And, um, and I, 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 you know, these are wonderful people that I get to work with and I'm learning so much from them as well. Um, it just, every time I look forward to being in these meetings and, you know, not all of our content is, you know, exciting and all of that, but at the same time, it's just one of those, you, you want to be there because you know you're there for something greater, this greater good. That's, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm going to ask you, I guess, how can, how can we bring Hispanic Latino IBD community together um, mm -hmm. and inspire them to share their stories and connect with our resources? Because, you know, people should know what, what is available to them in terms of education so they can make the best decisions in their care, right? So mm -hmm. how, what role, what do, how do we do that? And what role do you play in doing that? Yeah, so the great news is, and as I said, you know, I've been through this journey several years with not a lot of resources because I didn't know what was out there. But the great news is the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation already has so many resources. First of all, you talked about the IBD Help Center where you can call in. And if you need in language services, they are available through a, um, a translation services. And so that's one way to get involved uh, to, to use that. We also have the website that has so many resources. I, I can't even tell you how many resources. One thing that I've learned a lot about is just the research and what's being done and the potential. I was really excited to uh, listen in one of my first meetings as they were talking about some of the diets. Uh, they're learning about how diets may help us in that. When I started, I changed my diet very dramatically about 10 years ago, but it was not for my physician. He was kind of questioning if that was necessary or not. I just felt so terrible. I said, I don't care. I'm willing to try anything at this point. And I did some testing and found out some foods that were probably causing some problems for me. I immediately stopped them and it really has helped me in that. But to see now, fast forward this many years and some of the research and some of the validation of that information. So the website is just so much, almost too much information. So start small. 
you know, find those little ways and tips um, and things in there that really resonate with you. Each person I know probably is in a different place. So um, I can definitely encourage you to do that. And it's a nice connecting point as well, maybe with other patients, hearing other patients' stories. And then finally, I'm really excited about the work of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundations around their DNI journey. Um, that's something that I happen to be personally passionate about. And so I know we're revamping and really um, going to make some changes to provide more in-language types of resources out there. So stay tuned for that. Um, but you'll be seeing more of that as we, we dig into it and, and keep offering more and more resources. And it's always changing. And so don't think you've been out there and I've, I've seen it and that's all I need. Um, just to encourage you to keep digging in. Great, that's wonderful. And I'm just gonna open the, the floor up for any last words of advice. Yeah. Well, as I think about, um, again, first of all, thank you for having me on this. I'm just I'm so proud to be able to share. And um, I'm going to go back to, you know, Hispanic Heritage Month. You know, my culture, um, my identity is so critical to who I am. That's always been something that's been important to me. And I always wanted to hold on to that and create that same thing for my daughter. Um, and I think it's important that we don't hide that. I it, Early in my life, um, you know, we weren't encouraged to really demonstrate our ethnicity. We wanted to integrate and to you know, really mainstream ourselves. And so I've had even this journey around finding out who I was as a Latina, being able to help the next generations, um, understanding the, the incredible power that we have and the, the wonderful things that we have as, as Latinos to be able to, to give back and to offer more and more. So um, I just want to share that because I think it's so important as we're watching this and we think about Hispanic Heritage Month. It's not just a month. Um, we get to highlight it in this month, but every day we should be trying to make a difference in our community. And I think there's a lot of ways to do that. And then as a patient, and if you are somebody that is um, suffering or you know somebody who potentially is a patient as well, and they're going through their journey, whatever that looks like, just really encourage you to take ownership of that, learn as much as you can, have conversations, find resources, help others through the journey. I think we can all help each other along this path as well. And um, I'm looking forward to continuing my role with Crohn's and Colitis Foundation and still moving forward to our goal of a cure um, to make this a better, better place for all patients. Beautiful last words, love it. Annette, thank you so much for joining me in this conversation. I really enjoyed it. And I, it's a privilege to be able to speak to someone like you who um, is so open to sharing her experiences. So thank you so much. I know we will continue to hear more great things from you and, and be impacted by your your role uh, as a volunteer and uh, advocate for the community. So thank you from all of us. Thanks so much, Kat. I appreciate you having me. So with that, um, that's all the time we have. Um, I wanted to say to our audience who's joining us this evening, keep following us on Facebook for um, other stories and, and check out some previous posts from other um, patients from the community who've shared their brief experiences. We encourage you to comment, like, and, and share that content um, in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. And if you ever need support, have questions, need any of the resources and that was talking about, we are here for you. Contact the IBD Help Center and we can help you in any language, including Espanol, if you need it. Um, call 1-888-MY-GUT-PAIN or email us at info at Foundation.org. So with that, I wanna say buenas noches, good night.